We've got, who have we got, Kirsty? Uh, first we've got Sarah and she's on line one. Thanks. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, I'll put you straight on to Francine. You tell her what's, what's the going on. Um, my partner that I've had for 12 years sent a video across the internet to a woman. And um, I don't know whether it's worth saving or not. We've been together for 12 years, as I said. We've got a child together. And um, I love him. Mm -hmm. I've got to admit that. But um, we constantly argue and we're constantly having a go at each other. We complain about how we each other's bringing up the child. OK, so there's arguments going on, communication has, has sort yeah. of got very difficult. Yeah. OK, so Sarah, I'm going to ask you a really difficult question. I ask this question quite a lot. How are you partly responsible for the situation that's going on right now? <laughs> um, I disagree with him um, on the ways to raise our child. I disagree on the way to raise the children from previous marriage. Um, I am quite, quite to blame as well. Um, it's... It's basically tit for tat, I should say. Um, yeah, so you've gotten into this situation, where, yeah, this tit for tat thing. So, and how, it, how you know, it's, there's two ways of running a relationship. Either you're going to be relationship building or you're going to be relationship destroying. Yeah. And it takes one of you to actually stop playing the game. This yeah. is not a tit for tat thing. You are both on the same side. Yeah. So here's what I would suggest to you is that I would actually make yourself a note, write it down, write down all the things that are bothering you right now and how you would like to see them changed yeah. and then say to him, let's sit down, I'd like you to do the same. Let's write down everything that's bothering you and what you would like to see as changes and we were going to sit down together like adults yeah. and we're going to say we are both on the same side. We're bringing up children, we love each other, we've got a long investment of time yeah. in this relationship. Let's see, we're going into a new decade you know a new year let's see how we can negotiate to actually give each other what each other needs and it's as simple as that this is not rocket science no, of course. and if you come from the place where you're partly responsible you can actually phrase it like that what's his name your, your, your partner my partner's name is Tony Tony so you'd say Tony look here's what I'm upset about or here's what's a challenge for me and I'm partly responsible because I and as soon as you put that sentence into it, Tony will have the ears to listen to you. Right. Because you're not blaming him, you're actually saying how you're partly responsible mm. as well. Would you yeah. be willing to try that, Sarah? I'm willing to try that, yes. Yeah. Great, that's great. And mm. I wish, wish you lots of luck with that, because I think that will work. Mm. Thank Thanks, Sarah. Much. And that sounds like very sound advice that I'm sure lots of people could take on board, actually, just sort of deconstructing the yes. whole thing and uh, taking the emotion out of it a little bit, if that's possible. Um, Kirsty, who else have we got? On line two, we have Rachel. Thanks, Kirsty. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Hi, Rachel. And Happy New Year to you. And to you, Rachel. You. What's happening? Uh, well, basically, um, uh, my boyfriend um, split up with me about three or four weeks before Christmas. Mm -hmm. We weren't living together or anything, but um, he's, uh, he's seeing this particular ex that he's um, known for ooh, about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a child together, a, a legitimate child. And he's done this with me before, about two years ago, and then he, he sort of comes back a couple of months later with his tail in between his legs and all that, and that's as though nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. you, you have a child together, or he has a child with the with the ex. Uh, he had a child with his with, the, the, with, with his ex. ex. Okay, yeah. okay. So and he comes back, and each time he comes back, he gives you a good enough story so that you take him back again. Yeah, and um, basically, I'm, I'm very upset, and I hadn't had the strength before to um, to say no, but I, I'm just. So, so fed up of them treating me like this. But, uh... Do you know, here's an interesting thing, Rachel. Um, no one can treat anybody any particular way unless they allow it. That's right. So, so if, if he is behaving this way and you allow it, why would he not behave that way? If he knows that he can always come back to you with some story and there isn't a consequence for him. So here's what I would, I would say a couple of things to you. First of all, is that good enough for you? No, is, it isn't. No, it isn't, I is it? I I, it? Absolutely not. I mean, because it's, it's, it's demeaning and humiliating as well, really. You know, you are not second best. No. So what you've got to do now is to put some consequences in place. So he comes back and you say, no, absolutely not. We're not going to do this anymore. I'm not playing anymore. So either you're going to come back to me because you want to be with me and then I want commitment. I want us to get engaged. I want us to get married. I want your absolute commitment. Right. Or you go back to her and that's absolutely fine. But you've got to follow through on that and you may need to give him some time and he will, if he wants to be with you, come back. But you've got to put those strong boundaries in place. W would you be willing to do that? It's a case of having to. I think it is, isn't it? I think it is. Mm. Because, you know, you, you deserve more. New year, new decade, Rachel. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. You look after you for a change. Yeah. Thank you very much.